does a celebrity, a fire-breathing hookah, and weaponized incompetence have in common? They're all in this episode of Monster House. It's a monster house. It's a monster house. Monster House, the home improvement show that is also a timed competition. Homeowners seeking a makeover will pick a theme. Steve, our manly man host, along with a design crew, will design a few projects based around that theme. Then the design crew will f off and Steve will bring in a construction crew to build these projects. But they will only have five days to build everything. If they manage to do it, they win a really expensive package of tools. And if they don't, then they walk away with nothing. And the homeowner will be left saying, um, so you guys are gonna finish the rest of this though, right? Putting a time limit on a home makeover seems highly irresponsible and, I'll say it, kind of a dick move. But this show isn't about seeing people happy with their makeovers, it's about chaos and watching property values get obliterated right before your very eyes. This episode of Monster House is very special though because somehow they got a celebrity to agree to doing this show. Anne Ramsey acted on a very popular sitcom called Mad About You, which aired from 1992 to 1999. So, she's kind of a big deal at the time. I have no idea who this is in 2024, but she's still out there and thriving, and we love that for you, Anne. And in the astronomical chance that you happen to see this video, I would love to do a quick interview about your experience on this show. Because no celebrity in their right mind would be like, yeah, let me volunteer my very high-end mansion to this nonsense. I'm guessing she was pushed into this by her agent as a publicity stunt, because at the time of this episode, Mad About You had been over for about five or six years. When the series ended, so did the steady paycheck. I feel like something else is, is right around the corner. But you never know. It's okay, Anne. Irrelevancy comes for us all. I'm already there. Hit the like and subscribe. So what theme did Anne go with? She's asked Steve to turn her Ocean View retreat into a Sultan Shangri-La. A Sultan's house kind of evokes drama and also sort of a luxury too. Sultan House, okay. All right, I could see that being very classy. It will be interesting to see what Steve interprets from the word Sultan, but one thing is for sure, fire will probably be involved. The design phase is really funny this time because the producers of the show must have realized, oh no, there's literally only white people on set for this Middle Eastern theme build. We can't just have white people designing all these Middle Eastern elements. So they bring in a Middle Eastern designer for the design phase, which is a good call. But he doesn't end up saying very much, so in the final edit, it just ends up looking like white people designing everything, while this guy stands in the background as the diversity hire. He does make one important contribution. Maybe a fountain which is very important in any courtyard or backyard that you will find a fountain. He's really soft-spoken, so if you didn't hear that very well, basically what he said is fountains are something he considers culturally important. You see them in any home that has a big courtyard. Out of everything that's been suggested so far, this is the only one with some cultural significance and nuance. And Steve immediately comes in with... But a fountain to me is not very monster, unless you make it blow some fire. Oh, there it is. Well, why don't we make it a hookah fountain? that's blowing fire. Fountains are important to y'all. Sorry, not monster enough. It certainly is not. What if we breathe fire? Fuck yeah, that seems counterintuitive as hell. <gasps> what if the fire was coming out of a giant hookah? <gasps> yes, because hookahs, hookahs are Middle, Middle Eastern. Eastern. Yeah. yeah, and that's all we need to know about them. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Sure. Thank you, Mohammed. No problem. Good job. <laughs> This episode is honestly kind of boring in terms of the design elements, because if you notice, all of the major construction is taking place on the outside of the home. Really, the only thing happening on the inside is essentially a fancy wall decor and curtains around the bed. Hardly the shenanigans that we know this show for. But remember, this is a celebrity episode, so I'm sure there were a lot of contracts and liabilities in place, and Anne isn't gonna let them fuck up her actually nice house. She was like, build me a fire pit or something. Steve's like, I got something better. 
But where this episode lacks in the over-the-top design elements, it more than makes up for in drama and tea. Because you haven't met this atoll yet. But it's time to, so let's meet the crew. This time, the crew is Garen, who for sure plays saxophone in his off time. Eric, epic mustache and electrical extraordinaire. Jeff, aka Crazy Bones, who's gonna weld the shit out of some steel pipes. It's gonna be crazy. And Martin, who looks like a big, burly fireman, but he's actually a very soft-spoken sweetheart with a lovely accent, and I want him to be my friend. This crew is S-tier. They are going to divide and conquer, and yet work as one collective apparatus to obliterate any obstacle that stands in their way. These guys are masters of their craft, and they're all going to do an incredible job. And then there's Kent. Kent is all problems and no solutions. Kent definitely lied on his resume. No one knows why Kent is here. I don't even think that Kent knows why Kent is here, because he certainly does not want to be. Kent's sole purpose is going to be to make everyone on set as miserable as he possibly can. This is no longer Monster House. We have now entered Kent's bungalow of despair. Grab your crazy straws, kids. It's time to sip some tea. Day one begins with the usual debrief of all the things that need to be done, and the guys are like, a curtain, a canopy, and a fountain? Yeah, sure, we'll get that done by, like, tomorrow. I thought this was gonna be tough. It, it usually is, but this is a celebrity episode, so we had to tone it down a little bit. But hey, I got them to give us approval for the fire. Fire? Found's gonna shoot fire. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, just big old balls of fire just shooting out. <laughs> Right on. Unregulated gas lines just spitting out fire in every which direction. All right, man. Maybe the fireballs will set fire to other things. And then everything will be on fire. And then everything will be on fire. And then everything will be on fire. You good, bro? And then everything will be on fire. This S-tier crew wastes absolutely no time. I mean, everybody is kicking ass from minute one. Even Kent. Nothing is wrong. Yet. Martin and Garen get right to work on building the frame for the fountain, but there's a problem. The patio slopes down for drainage, but the water-filled fountain needs to be level. That's how little there is to do on this episode build-wise, is that the biggest drama they can come up with so far is, Oh no! The fountain isn't level! Guess we're gonna have to level it. Well, the grade on the concrete is so severe that we're about five inches out on the framing, so we need to adjust the framing for the grade. You see what I mean? You can just tell this guy is wholesome as hell. Can you imagine him giving you a life lesson? Now listen, son. Sometimes the hills of life slope upwards, and sometimes the hills of life slope downwards. But it's all about how you level with those slopes that makes all the difference. You got that, champ? And you'd be like, hell yeah, Martin. Hell yeah. A quick check-in with Anne reveals that somebody accidentally cut down her favorite lemon tree, and it would seem that she's really mad about it. <coughs> she's really mad. Day one ends with a ton of progress already done. I mean, at this pace, these guys could have easily finished all of these projects like a whole day ahead of schedule. But Kent will be there to make sure that that absolutely positively does not happen. Day two is a lot like day one. These guys are working so quickly and so efficiently that I honestly think the camera crew was having trouble keeping up. One of the big projects for day two is there's still a lot of shrubbery that needs to be cleared from the area where the canopy seating is going to be built. And Kent is starting to feel slightly uncomfortable. All this hard labor is rubbing him the wrong way. I prefer you guys give us a hand. I think reality TV sucks, and that's the truth. <laughs> Just it comes to the point where when we need the help, it doesn't seem like it's there. Yeah, it's cool. we we'll handle it. We gotta do we'll it, it though. You know? It's, our, it's our, our job. Yeah, you heard that, right? Kent is perplexed on why the crew that is filming the show isn't also helping them with the projects and cleanup. And the rest of his teammates are like, well, Kent... That's the show, buddy. That's what we signed up for. That's the challenge. There was a presentation. There was paperwork, Kent. You had to sign things. 
How are you confused about what's happening here? The only other interesting thing that happens on day two is this very out of pocket moment. Then yeah. dedicate the first poll to the heroes of Iwo Jima. Okay. Yeah. If only we could go back in time and reach those soldiers on Iwo Jima as they faced the horrific barbarism of warfare and showed them this video. Show them that one day they would be immortalized by one out of six canopy poles in Anne Ramsey's backyard. They'd be like, I fought so that this lady could enjoy her freedoms to the fullest. And I guess I can't be too mad about that. I can't be too mad. Day three begins and these guys are so far ahead that I think Steve had to start creating additional tasks to make this more challenging. On any other episode with more intensive design builds, I feel like the fabric for the canopy and sewing it all together would have been outsourced to a local company. But because there's so little to do, Steve decides that Garen is going to do all of the canopy fabric by himself and he gives them the smallest sewing machine to do it with. We usually don't do a lot of sewing on this show. Garen is our seamstress for the week. He's gonna be sewing. There's a lot to do, so I'll be here for a while. Oh, you gotta sew all those canopies by your lonesome? Oh, well, let me play you a sad song on the world's smallest sewing machine. But Kent all of a sudden comes out of nowhere with a design change to the canopy, a project that isn't his and has no involvement in whatsoever. He was saying that he wanted to put rods through each of the fabrics. I don't think we need pencil rock, pencil rod. I don't think we need that. When Kent makes a suggestion, it's always a downgrade. The only thing Kent is interested in is having to do the least amount of work possible. And everyone tries to be really patient with him when they turn him down. Well, I mean, if this rod would give it that very distinct. Every two feet, there's gonna be a rod. Yeah, you gotta do that. Well, I'm with Garen on that. All right, that's fine. Well, Garen, have at it then. It's your project. <laughs> Okay. I mean, you can't, that doesn't mean you guys can't help each other. Well, I'm, I was going to give my opinion, but it doesn't seem to be needed, so. At which point, Kent will storm off and then complain about not being heard or appreciated. His mood has once again turned sour. I have no idea why they won't even listen to what I'm saying. We'll see how it works out. Kent has two major projects that he's responsible for on this build the candle wall decor piece, and doing the tiling on the fountain when they're ready for that step. But Kent will spend as much time as he can avoiding his projects and instead interjecting suggestions where they're just not needed. Look, as a fellow neurodivergent, I'm sensing a bit of divergence in my man Kent over here. And that's a really tough thing to live with, especially if you're oblivious to your problems and haven't gotten a diagnosis yet. But being neurodivergent isn't an excuse to be awful to your peers. And as you'll soon see, a downright snake in the grass. Kent tries his best to downgrade another project. I think that looks better than it will look if we do it all the way up. Here's my reasons. These are going to be halves. You can't put, you're not going to put candles in there. If we, if we leave it this way, it's 45 candles. Okay, that's 25 inches versus 45 inches, which already makes it smaller. You know, big is not always the best. Yeah. First off, you watch your tone when you talk to Steve. We stand, Steve. And you don't tell Steve what's bigger and better. What show do you think you're on anyways? Average House? Kent gets denied again. Kent storms off again. In my opinion, it's going to look like... Well, you're building it, so the only reason it would look like shit is if you cause it to look like shit. I've not been able to do one thing creative at this point. Why... Did you think you were going to do anything creative on this build? You're a contractor. The designs are done. You just have to build it. You were called in to build, not create. You see, Kent is not getting his way, and he's really mad. Don't say it. Why? It's not funny. It doesn't even make sense. The show was called Mad About You, and you keep making Mad About It jokes. <sighs> I know, but... Mad about you is a really tough one to land as a punchline. Trust me, I've been trying to think of something clever. Well, unless you can make it work, you need to move on to a new joke. I swear. 
You really frustrate me sometimes. Don't. Don't. Don't say it. Don't say it. Are you mad about it? Back outside, now the neighbors are coming for our boy Steve. Can you give me a sense of what's going up here? Mm, can you give me a sense of what's going on here? No, I cannot. Back up onto your property and mind your own business. I hate nosy neighbors. I bet he's on the board of the HOA too. This is the type of guy where I would break into his house and paint all of his walls the exact same color, only a slight shade lighter or a slight shade darker, to the point where the change was almost imperceptible. Almost. But he would still be sitting in his house, feeling uncomfortable, looking around, knowing something was different, but he just couldn't tell what. And day by day, this feeling would sink deeper and deeper until it ate him from the inside out to the point that he was a mere shell of the man that he once used to be. So back up, buddy, before I come over there and paint your house. And why is everybody coming for my boy Steve this episode? Are we going to have to square up? Are we going to have to square up? Let me go grab my protractor and I'll see you at the fountain at three. Be there, or be minding your own business. Don't come bother me again. Day four, Kent shows up wearing a shirt that says racism in word art font, and it's the best thing I've ever seen. But it gets even better because there's an E that you can't see, and you won't see it till he takes his jacket off, so really it says eracism, which is even funnier if it's supposed to stand for erase racism. If that is the meaning, then this is the greatest shirt to ever have been made by human hands, and I want one. Who made this, and for why? For why does a racism shirt exist? Okay, so Kent is anti-racism, which, all things considered, that's a huge plus. So, let, let's, let's give it up for our boy Kent. But, oh no. What if it stands for E-racism? And it's actually some underground, exclusively racist internet cafe. Nah. Today is the day that Kent is supposed to start tiling the fountain, which is like a pretty important job since that's like the central showpiece of this whole build. But his general attitude and work ethic so far has everyone concerned, and rightfully so. I think Kent has totally let us down. I don't know how he got chose for his build team. I think he completely exaggerated his abilities. And then, Eric drops a bombshell. He made a comment to me yesterday. There were people that were kind of making him look stupid. I hate when they make me an idiot. He made a comment that he was going to start to milk it. I'm going to milk it now, dude. <laughs> no, don't milk it. We need to get done. This is it. This is where Kent goes full heel because he 100% meant what he just said right there. And now you are about to witness the very definition of weaponized incompetence. I don't think that this job's gonna be finished by tomorrow night at midnight. We have one guy that just doesn't seem to care. If this was in your bedroom and you paid someone to come do this, would you be satisfied with that kind of stuff on the outside? I'm gonna have to defer to Steve. Steve is an expert in all this stuff. Uh, I've seen him be an expert in everything. So, uh, just, if he says it's wrong, I'm, it must be wrong. But ten minutes later, Kent is done with the fireplace and taking a smoke break. Dude, the balls to do like ten minutes worth of work and smoke a cigarette in the middle of everyone else working. This dude has no fear, and I do not mean that as a compliment. His behavior has been so bad that even Martin is losing faith. If that's an example you're tiling, that, that what you've done there, it better not be because this isn't going to last long. Because you can't have that. This is a, a focal piece. We can't have it. If you manage to piss off someone as gentle-mannered as Martin, you know you fucked up. However, by the end of day four, there does seem to be somewhat of a stride going with the tiling. So you're going to finish all that stuff up tonight? It's got to be done tonight. Can't, can't go to sleep until it's done. Kent promises to stay up all night and have the tiling done by the morning. You know where this is going. It looks almost exactly the same as it did when I left last night. Well, as soon as you guys left, uh, the power went out. I was tired, hallucinating. 
lack of sleep. I was starting to hallucinate. I was seeing like little Chinese men walking around. I, mean, I, was, I was seeing all kinds of... Chinese men? Oh, no. It was e-racism, wasn't it? <sighs> Damn it, Kent. And to help Kent, because he clearly needs it, Steve wants to put extra hands on the tiling work to speeden it up a little bit, you know? I can't tell you how disturbed I am about this. Do I need to get someone else extra no. to come in here and help you finish no, this you fountain? Don't. No, you don't. Because at this point right now, I feel like that I do. No, you don't. But Kent won't let anyone help him because the fountain was Kent's project. He was called in as the tiling expert. This was supposed to be his one thing and you can tell he carries a very big ego about it like what do you want when you don't have help you complain about it and when you're offered help you complain about it i don't i don't get it at this point steve feels like they're so far behind that he doesn't leave kent any choice steve decides to put another man on the project you know what if you guys want to get an extra guy go right ahead uh, if you want to do this to me now that's fine it's not a personal thing at all as individuals it's not getting done and i think that's a general consensus you know it's like watching a dog try to die right now you know what i'm saying i think it's cool and after running around in circles with Kent all day, Steve finally gets fed up and calls Kent out about what he said. You said that, that, you were, that you were the goat of the project and you were going to milk it. What did that mean? I never said that once. You didn't say anything like that? Not, no, I didn't say that. You'll never okay. find that on tape. I'm going to milk it now, dude. I'm going to milk it, milk it, milk it, milk it. And then do you know what he does? Hey. And then do you know what he does? He walks off set to go take a nap. He walks off set to go take a nap. He is so disrespectful and insufferable by day five. It's like a snowball rolling down the hill. It starts on day one with, hey, why aren't you guys helping us more? And it ends on day five with, now I'm gonna take a nap with hours left to go in this competition and nothing is finished. Yeah, I'm gonna take a nap. The team is simply stunned to find out that this fool actually went to go take a nap. He went for a lie down. Are you kidding me? Garen finds Kent wandering the halls with a sleeping bag. What are you doing? Uh -oh. They attempt one more intervention. It's not going to do shit. And Garen does his best to give one final heartfelt rally cry. And we're all tired. This is the least I've ever slept in my life. We don't have excuses. We Nobody cares why the job isn't done. Yeah. Does anybody not care if we win? That's what I want to know. That's a good question. If Kent was a quarter as efficient as the rest of these guys, they would have coasted through this build. The only reason everyone is behind on their personal tasks is because they have to keep stopping to compensate for Kent. This episode is honestly a really good social study on how one person's inefficiency can bring an entire system to its knees. But Garen's rally cry seemed to have worked because everyone kicks it into extra high gear and little by little, the projects start getting done. Kent even manages to get the tiling on the fountain done at the very heavy help from Garen and Martin, but they get it done. And then Kent just stands around for the rest of the episode. There's still two hours left to go and there's still a lot to do. Everyone else is scrambling to finish all of the last minute tasks and clean up to make sure that they get done on time. And Kent literally just stands around for the last two hours. He's just like, what? I did the tiling. What do you want from me? I'm hallucinating. The fountain gets assembled and Steve definitely creams his pants at the sight of fire. That's great. <laughs> That's great. So hot. This fountain actually looks pretty sweet at the end. I mean, this has to be the most practical episode of Monster House ever. 
I would actually be super happy with everything that they chose to build in this episode. Now that the competition is officially over and the boys have won, Steve takes this opportunity to let Kent know how he really feels. I just can't believe you stood around and watched everybody work and didn't do anything. I didn't see you helping get anything done these last few hours. I didn't see anything. I mean, how can you respect yourself as a builder on this team this last day or so because of that? I want you to tell each one of these guys how good of a job they did making you look good this week. Kiss my ass. Kiss your ass. Kiss your, I want you to kiss my ass and kiss their ass for getting you some prizes this week. You need to be bowing down to these four guys right here because of them, you get to walk away with a prize kit. Not that you deserved one. Why don't you shake this man's hand right here? Yeah, shake his hand. Say, thank you for winning me some prizes this week. Same thing to this gentleman. How about this guy right here? Thank you, Eric, for getting me some prizes. And this guy, Bones, thank you for crawling up ladders for three days when you're afraid of heights. Thank you, Martin, for finishing my fountain. That being said, it's over. And so that's why I waited till that moment to tell you exactly how I felt. Guys, please come down. You go, Steve. <sighs> it's over. We have finally exited Kent's bungalow of despair. The reveal is pretty straightforward, and Ramsey loves everything, and so do I. I think this is the only episode that may have actually managed to raise the property value of a house. Everything is super classy, everything is elegant, and oh no, don't let Anne hug Kent, no! Why didn't you guys warn her? You don't let a professional lady like that hug a Kent. Another episode, another victory. If I caused you to slightly exhale air at any point during this video, be sure to hit like and subscribe. The community is growing and we'd love to have you on board. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go paint Kent's house and he's gonna be real mad about it. freeze frame. I'm doing a freeze frame. I need to do it for 20 seconds. Has it, has it been 20 seconds yet? All right, bye.